Marijuana vending oh machine. Oh my god, bro, that's crazy. Everyone's that's favorite crazy. plant was bound to show up at the vending machine party at some point. The machine that will make history. Reapers, what's this good? It's your boy Laser. He's from the vibes back with some more reaction videos. He's loving the reaction content. We can deliver that for you guys in this video. We're back in the strangest vending machines around the world. Because there's so many strange vending machines. We're about to dive straight in. If you guys enjoy the reaction content, you want more reaction videos like this in the future, you simply just hit that like button. You subscribe. Hit your notifications on. It takes less than a second. Let's dive straight into this video. The 20 strangest vending machines around the world. Oh shit, here we go. Dude, that's a dope ass intro. Number 20. Caviar vending machine. Caviar fish eggs? Most vending machines are full of junk food, not expensive treats that only the rich and famous can afford. Just healthy. This one, which is in a busy LA mall, serves the best caviar in the US at the touch of a button. Beverly Hills Caviar opened the very first caviar vending machine in the country at the Burbank no. Town Center. The machines were put in place just in time for Black Friday at Westfield Century City and Westfield Topanga in LA. So you can celebrate the money you saved on a huge TV by buying some vending machine caviar, I guess. It also sells truffles, escargot, batarga, bellinis, oils, plates, and spoons made of mother of pearl, gift boxes, and gourmet salts. You should see how they actually make caviar, guys. Like, they actually squeeze out the fish. Prices range from about it's $50 weird. to $500. For $500, a person can buy about 28 grams of the luxurious fish egg food. Grams? The company Ooh. calls the machines a one-of-a-kind caviar boutique. But it's still not clear if people will buy expensive treats in such an unusual way. Beverly Hills Caviar says it has the largest selection of fresh caviar and can ship anywhere in North America within hours. So maybe this will become a major food yeah, fish just, like, among the rich anyway. Fish can just Time stay still. The rare topic. I think mm. deep down, most of you expected us to be making at least one visit to Japan in this video. Because, Ooh. yeah, there's no doubt that when it comes to vending machines, and stuff, vending machine? Japan's on another level. So what if you're in a real hurry and you just don't have time to head across town to buy that human-sized doll that you need immediately? Huh? Not to worry, there's vending machines in Tokyo that can sell you one at the touch of a button. If you want one of these so-called drink gals, it couldn't be more convenient. They even come with around a half a swimsuit on, so you won't feel weird walking around with it after you- God purchase. help me if so I got a hold of one of those. these dolls be used for? <laughs> and don't be rude. Do you think a drink gal is a good way to combat loneliness for some people? As always, comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know what you think about what we just showed on screen. Let's move on to the next one. Dude. Number 19. <laughs> no thanks. Gold vending machine. We've seen caviar. Now it's time for yet another status symbol. This like Mr. Beast for me. gold vending machine appeared out of the blue in the Westfield Shopping Center in West London. The machine was put there, it seems, to meet growing retail demand. German company X Orient Lux makes the gold to go machine. The company wants to take advantage of gold's reputation as a safe haven in terms of economic trouble. The company also thinks there's a market for buying neatly packaged last minute gifts like wedding anniversary or milestone gifts. Every 10 minutes, a computer inside the machine changes the price of gold to reflect changes on the world market. This is actually very interesting, indeed. It sells bars and coins of different sizes, including a special souvenir 2.5 gram bar with an Ooh. engraving of the London skyline on its back. Shoppers can also buy a 1 gram coin for about 40 euro or a 250 gram bar for about 10,250 euro. The first ever gold vending machine was in the lobby of the Emirates Palace Hotel in Abu Dhabi. It sold 320 gold items, like a 10 gram gold bar, and customized gold coins. Six vending machines have been set up in Europe and the Americas since then. The gold ATMs are made to be put in shopping malls and airports. They're meant to make it easier for regular people to invest in gold. Because for sure, the thing stopping most people from buying gold is where it's located, not the price. Number Interesting 18. indeed. Interesting indeed. Fibo, nightlife food vending machines in Amsterdam. In Dutch food culture, the Fibo Amsterdam vending machine is very important. In 1941, John Isaac de Borst opened a bakery called Bakerijie Fibo. It was later renamed Mason Fibo, and in 1960, it became an automatic snack bar. Ticket vending machines that sold snacks and meals were once popular all over the world. 
When the machines went out of fashion in New York and other cities, FIBO in Amsterdam kept the tradition going. From the capital, FIBO took over the rest of the country. Because of this, the machine that sells hot croquettes and other snacks is now seen as a typical Dutch example of snack cuisine. I have never ate this before. I don't know what... Guys, Same. let me know if that actually tastes good or not. FIBO stands for Ferdinand Bolstrap near the Albert Kuppmart. This is a street in Amsterdam where the original shop still stands. At least good. What does the slogan De Leckerst on the FIBO machine mean? De Leckerst means the tastiest. Have you ever tried one? Is it Do like you sweet? Agree? Lekker. In all of the Netherlands, there's about 60 shops, and there's more than 20 FIBO shops in Amsterdam. Number 17. Interesting. Pecan pie vending machine. I thought that was a squirrel vending machine. If I was like, what the fuck? you're out driving on Highway 71, you might want to keep an eye out for signs that tell you how to get to the big squirrel statue holding a pecan. Because I right know. next to this strange roadside statue is a vending machine with full-sized homemade pecan pies that you should not miss. That's the nearby really cool. Bertel Pecan Farm owns both the squirrel statue and the pie vending machine. Their pecan pies were so popular that they put in a vending machine that works 24 hours a day to keep pie lovers happy. That's so good. That's so I good and cool. Like that. The pecan pie machine is in front of the Berdal Pecan Candy and Gift Company. Wow. It's thought to be the only one of its kind in the U.S. Every day, fresh pies and other sweet pecan treats are added. And during the holidays, this happens even more. Dude, As that looks so good. squirrel who goes by the name Mrs. Pearl, she's 14 feet tall and holding a pecan pie bigger than your head. Dozens of people get off the highway every day to take pictures by the statue. And to grab some pie, of course. That's actually really cool. Number 16. That's really cool. The hot menu vending machine. They got wings? In Japan, vending machines oh, are Japan. a form of art. By Western standards, most machines are actually pretty normal, which means they sell drinks. Some places sell both hot and cold drinks, though, which is a little different. They probably sell tell because the little line below the picture of the drink is red if the can or bottle will be hot, and blue if it'll be cold. There's even vending machines that sell beer and sake, and you don't need an ID to use them. No this way. This is a normal part of Japanese culture. People who are too young to buy alcoholic drinks don't do it because it's against the law. But they can just this do it. culture of respect. Most vending machines take Pasmo or Suica cards, which are the same things used on the subway. The cards already have money on them, so you can use them to buy a drink if you don't have cash. Ooh. Dude, Japanese items, like, they've always looked very interesting and like Many good. machines have a place to swipe the card, just like any subway turnstiles. The part that's the coolest is that it says it's open 24-7 and it has casual food. As if I'd expect formal silver service food to come out of a vending machine. Wow. It also says hot menu and frozen foods. Most likely, the food was made, put in the freezer, and then heated up again so it could be sold. And you can buy a frozen version for later. I'm curious about how often the food is checked to see if it's still frozen. That's what I was going to say, but like... in Japan and Japanese people, I think the machine is probably cleaned and checked every day. Seriously, there's like no trash even in Tokyo. It's crazy. Oh, wow. Number that is 15. true. That is true. Japan's rice vending machines in Osaka. Oh, rice. They got Depending rice? on the type, a 22 bag of rice from this machine in oh, Hibeji, shit. Japan, costs between $30 and $40. It comes in like dog bags. Kinds. Rice is very important in Japan, and if you suddenly need a huge bag when the stores are closed, this could be a lifesaver. It's a part of all kinds of dishes in Japan, like Japanese curry. In Osaka's nerd neighborhood, Denden Town, if you go down to the right back alley, you'll find anything. Made cafes, stores that only sell LED lights, etc, etc, etc. So like, what if like you just not There will also not be put a bag. machines there. <laughs> But Denden Den is not like most places, because in between retro gaming stores, hobbyists, people who buy and sell old toys, and stores that sell adult videos, Denden's Den Den's target audience probably doesn't know how to cook very well. Poor Don't be surprised to see <laughs> super funny. noodles in a can, and even fully cooked curry. But when you read the small print, you find out some bad news. First, there's a note just below the heading, curry rice in a can, that says risotto style. On one side of the plate, there's sticky white rice, and on the other, there's hot curry. This risotto is rice in a soup. Actually, it's not even rice. It's called konyaku rice, which means it looks like rice, but doesn't taste much like rice. The more you read about curry in a can, the more you'll probably realize you should hurry up and eat it before the label makes you change your mind. Curry's really good, dude. Number 14, 
Pizza vending machine. I've seen videos on this, dude. This is the only machine that can make fresh pizza in three minutes right in front of you. That is fucking cool. You can cool. get the smell and taste of an Italian pizza made with the best Italian ingredients. Oh, that does. Time day I don't know, dude. Night in a convenient takeout box. Even though it comes from Croatia, which used to be part of Italy, but not the part where pizza is traditionally from. That would be Naples, the land of Maradona and watermelons. Still, it kind of sounds good. Flour and water are mixed by the machine to make fresh pizza dough. Dude, honestly, like pizza in a vending the machine? Pizza crust is then made by pressing the dough with the machine. The tomatoes then spread out evenly over the crust, and then it starts to heat up on its own. After the toppings and cheese have been put on the pizza, it's moved to the oven. Then it's baked at 380 degrees Celsius for a time. At the same time, the pizza tray is folded, and when the process is done, the pizza is put on the tray and delivered. So does it the use like a pizza machine comes in a standard printer? size and is portable, so if you want to move it, you can do so easily and without much trouble. And it can hold different kinds of pizza, hot and cold, which is pretty cool, right? That's actually Number very interesting. 13. Egg vending machine. Egg vending machine, oh shit. Have you ever thought about getting everything you need from a vending machine? Nope. You don't need to dream any longer. Because Japan is on its way to selling literally everything through vending machines. <laughs> this, of course, includes eggs straight from the farm. And because the demand for shelf-stable products, pantry staples, and other meat wow. and dairy basics is always growing, and you've probably been to a store a few times and found that all the eggs were missing from the shelves. So what do you do if on a lazy Sunday morning you really want some scrambled eggs on toast or a vegetable and cheese frittata? So it like just gives you the eggs. Like, what if it just gives you busted eggs, bro? You could bro? wait and hope that eggs will be there next time you go, or you could try a new, easy, and interesting way to get eggs: a vending machine. These eggs on demand machines get eggs from nearby farms. Those are big ass this eggs. Helps farmers get rid of their extra eggs, and it gives people what they want to eat: eggs. Yeah, Japan has vending machines that sell farm fresh eggs. How oh, can that be? Wow. You ask. So, this is how a typical Japanese egg vending machine looks. You can choose how many eggs you want and how you want them packaged. Eggs come in netted bags for smaller amounts, while egg cartons hold a dozen or more God eggs. God damn! Most egg vending machines are owned by farmers, and you can usually find them in Japan in rural areas. Number 12. Interesting. Sprinkles Cupcake ATM Oh, yeah, cupcakes. Oh, shit. People from all over the country are drawn to the Sprinkles Cupcake ATM because it sells sweet treats even at 2 a.m., which makes it totally worth going out of your way oh, for. Oh, boy. The cupcake chain already has more than a dozen ATMs. They decided to branch out by putting the first cupcake ATM on the campus of the University of Southern California. This one was a test to see if they could make money in a high traffic area where they don't have space or money to make a big bakery. It's a creative way to run a business, and it sure beats getting a Snickers bar on your way to Spanish. Gee, Warner. that looks good. That looks fucking good as shit. It looks like crumble cookies, Before but better. Before 2 a.m., the bakers they were show cupcakes. up to start making bread for the day. And here's their most popular cupcake. Red velvet with cream cheese frosting. That shit looks Look so good. that tablecloth. Each cupcake is put in its own box, which is then put in the ATM. An ATM can hold between 400 and 800 cupcakes, but Sprinkles says that it rarely fills them all the way up. Instead, they prefer to restock them several times a day, so the cupcakes always taste fresh. It's said that each ATM can deliver between 500 and 1,000 cupcakes in a day. Damn! I'd love to show you what the ATM looks like on the inside, but that Sprinkles so says good. that this information is top secret and belongs to them. Number Ooh, they got a formula, bro. <laughs> burger vending machine. Oh, a burger? If you think you know everything there is to know about burgers, you might laugh at the idea of eating one from a vending machine. How is it cooked? When the first robot burger vending machine, called Robo Burger, opened in 2022 on the second floor of the Newport Center Mall in Jersey City, New Jersey, is it a lot of people me? were more than a little bit skeptical. The bright red outside of the machine was the first thing that stood out. It took up about 12 square feet. Like any other vending machine, all you have to do is plug it into the wall. Robo Burger, on the other hand, cooks burgers from start to finish that taste like they came from a restaurant. Damn. Not like a bag of potato chips from a vending machine. So like, 
The machine cooks the Customers burgers. Customers can add cheese, ketchup, or mustard to their burgers by touching a screen. Holy the robo shit. chef will then grill the patty, toast the bun, assemble the meal, and bring it to the customer six minutes later for $6.99. Six minutes? The machine takes credit cards, and it also takes Apple Pay and Google Pay. We really are living in the future. Robo Burger was made to work just like a restaurant, but only take up a small amount of space. Inside the machine is a fridge, an automatic griddle, and a system for cleaning. Wow. You can hear the Robo Burger's cleaning systems at work between orders. Number 10. That actually looks really crab cool. Crab vending machine. Oh, dude, I've seen this. This is fucked up. a late night hankering for crab? They're like Unless live. you're from Baltimore or an actual sea otter, that might seem like a strange question. But a new vending machine in Hangzhou, China, sells crabs for about $3.25 They're each. They're live crabs. That many people in China get the crab cravings that have to be satisfied right away. The machine is full of hairy crabs, which are a oh tasty my. treat that are in season hairy. in the fall. Ugh. Inside the machine, the creatures are tied down with rope, but they're still alive. They've been put to sleep by a powerful cooling system. Customers put their money in the machine and they choose the most appealing crab. Then they take the crab from the bottom of the machine and cook it at home. Oh. No, dude. Or if they're really drunk, they might eat it crudo style on the street. Who this would eat it like that? Recommended, though. The person who brought the crab o mat to Hangzhou, a city in eastern China with about 9 million people, also runs a seafood stand right next door. He sells crabs during the day, but he wanted to give people who like to party at night a chance to enjoy some crab. He said, crab shops like ours usually close at night. But what are people to do at night when their stomach starts to feel empty and they want to chow down on a hairy crab and not No one, bro. Well, here's your answer. Number That's nine. Nasty. Uh, champagne vending machine. Ooh, champagne? Champagne lovers, get ready for what might be the best new thing in the world of bubbly. A champagne vending machine has arrived in New York City. This amazing idea is the only one of its kind in all of New York. The machine is next to the Staten Room, a new jazz-themed bar at the Lexington Hotel in Midtown Manhattan. It's stocked with bottles of Moet and Chandon Champagne. To use the vending machine, guests must first get a $25 gold coin at the Staten Getting Room. drunk tonight? Getting drunk tonight? which has the Moe and Shandong logo on it. Then they can choose the drink they want from the machine. The vending machine has 200 milliliter bottles of Imperial Brut or Imperial Rosé. Each bottle comes with a free flute to make it easier to drink. The new champagne also pays tribute to Marilyn Monroe, who was the most famous guest at the hotel. This is Monroe cool. lived in suite 1806 when she was married to Joe DiMaggio in the 1950s. The room is now called the Norma Jean Suite, and everyone knows how much Norma Jean, aka Marilyn, loved champagne. Number this is eight, really cool. baguette vending machine. Oh shit! Have you ever been on a trip to France and been really hungry? But when you get to the local bakery, it was closed for lunch. I want to go to France. What is going on there? They do sell food, but they're closed for lunch. This is how things go in France. The French like to take a long lunch. Boulangeries close in the middle of the day so that the bakers and other workers can take a break, and locals make plans around these midday closures. I just know that's good, bro. Oh my god. But there is a solution to this age-old problem of what to eat for lunch when the bakery's closed. The baguette vending machine has saved a lot of people from going hungry. Yeah, there's vending machines in France that give out fresh baguettes. You can see them as standalone machines on the edges of small villages, in front of boulangeries, and even built into the wall of a store, That's just dope. like an ATM. People usually go to a French boulangerie because they want more than just a baguette. Who can say no to an éclair au chocolat? Macaron, Paris Bray, or Canelli. If the store's closed, though, vending machines are a great choice. Oh my god, I just know that's Number good. Number seven. Canned bread vending machine. Oh shit. You can also buy canned bread from a vending machine in Tokyo, which Can? is strange for a country that does almost every kind of food well, but not notably bread. A lot of people think Japanese bread isn't always the best, and it probably doesn't taste much better when it comes out of a can. But still. I don't know, I mean, Japan, like, dude. Most sources say the canned bread was first made by colonists in New England. Wheat and rye were easy to get and cheap, so they started using them to make canned bread. Kind Since they didn't have ovens back then, they would cook it in an open fire and steam it instead of baking it. They sometimes added molasses to make it a little sweeter. 
This turns it into a kind of steamed pudding. In the 1920s and 30s, you could find breads and cans that are similar to what you can buy in grocery stores. It looks pretty good. People love these unique ways to make bread, and now it's caught on in Japan. It Number actually looks six, pretty good. Banana vending machine. Oh my god, bananas. Why does Tokyo have a banana vending machine? Well, it's well, Tokyo. Why not? The machine was first seen in Shibuya, Tokyo in 2010. It was made by the banana company Dole. When it first came out, Dole said that people used it because it was faster than trying to find a grocery store in fashion-focused Shibuya. Okay. Dude, so bananas? There's also a suggestion that many Japanese people like not having to deal with other people. I think some of us felt that. At first, there were plans for four banana machines all over Tokyo. But for now, there's only one, and it's in Shibuya, about two minutes walk from the famous crossing. Plus, this gives you a chance to cross the famous Shibuya Crossing, which is a must-do in Tokyo. Normal bananas cost 150 yen, even though the Dole website says they're low in sugar, and so-called super bananas cost 180 yen. I can't tell you what's so great about them, but they do come in nicer packaging, which is in itself ironic because the banana is its own package, it doesn't need help. If you think that's a lot for a banana, remember that this is Japan where melons in food courts cost 21,000 yen, so when you look at it that way, it's a steal. Also, the machine is kept at the perfect temperature for bananas, which is 13 degrees Celsius. This means they won't ripen too quickly or turn brown while they wait to be sold. And if you want a banana that's been treated well, well, you're gonna have to pay for it. Number five. Interesting, bro. French fry vending machine. Oh, they got french fries now? The first known french fry vending machine was made by an Australian company that no longer exists. It was called Mr. French Fry, and it first appeared back in 1982. The machine took three 20 cent Australian dollar coins to run, and it made hot fries in 60 seconds. I don't know why, this was like a fire ready to happen, dude. There was a salt <laughs> packet under the cup where the chips were served. Hauser Vending Company also made a French fry vending machine called Mr. Crispy's, which wow. has been in use since at least September of 1990 in places like factories and college campuses. The fries are cooked in sunflower oil at 365 degrees Fahrenheit for about 40 seconds. The machine even has a built-in fire extinguisher and a feature that I was turns it say. off automatically if something goes wrong. Beyond Technology, which is based in China's Shenzhen province, started making the Robo Fry machine in 2008. It makes hot fries in about 95 seconds, and now these amazing machines are appearing all over the world, even in France. That actually Number four. Really good. Umbrella vending machine. Umbrellas, bro? Bro, what the fuck? You can never go wrong with having a brawly on hand, especially if you live in the UK. So convenient that some enterprising soul thought to put them in a vending machine. The end result's inevitable. It will be raining. You can try it in a train station in the southwest. Once the storm is passed, it's common to see broken umbrellas thrown onto the street or hung from trash cans. Still, this company guarantee all of their models for three years. Umbrella vending machine, that is and new. naturally, their products are all engineered to resist more than their share fare of wind and rain. Number three, salad vending machines. Salad vending machines? Salad vending machines are a new trend, and in an area of vending machine business, that's a growing part. In the past few years, there's been a big increase in the number of requests for vending machines that sell fresh salads. Of course, this goes along with the rise of fast food with healthier options, or fast food that's vegan. Oh, shit. Fast food can be healthy, even if it comes from a vending machine. Imagine putting salads and other fresh foods in jars, tubs, or other containers and keeping them cool in high-tech vending machines. If you replace the glass on the front of the vending machine with a 42-inch HD touchscreen, it would be impossible to pass up, so the company says anyway. So, if you need a boost of vitamins on the go, this could be the solution for you. Ooh. Number two. All right. Marijuana vending Oh my machine. god, bro, that's crazy. Everyone's that's favorite crazy. plant was bound to show up at the vending machine party at some point. The machine that will make history was shown off that's by crazy. at Montana Smokehouse. <laughs> no way! Hall. It's called Zazz. The Zazz no is fucking the first way. machine in the world that lets anyone buy weed. That's also crazy. All kinds of cannabis related fun products from the Herbal Elements Medical Dispensary. They got now, like strains only edibles with a medical marijuana card can use the green. I figured. I was like no way they just sell this to everyone, bro. 
This is bad news for the average person who just wants to smoke some pot. Before letting people in, it uses scanning and camera technology to find out how old they are and whether their health status makes them eligible. Oh, shit. American Green CEO Stefan Sheeran offered potheads a glimpse of hope, however, stating that he imagines a day when his machines might populate the country. They say the main benefit of the machine is it makes it easier for people who want to be discreet. Legalize the, the plant. is that it speeds up the process of buying weed by cutting out the middleman and potential theft opportunities. Win-win. <laughs> No fucking Number way. One, <laughs> That's crazy. Underwear vending machine. Oh shit, People dude. often talk about used panty vending machines when they talk about how weird Japan can be. I don't know what I'm sniffing tonight. This is one of the first things about Japan. So many naughty tourists have traveled all over the country in search of these legendary panty I know what I'm sniffing tonight. Most of the time, their quest turns out to be a failure. Even though it's thought <laughs> that Japan is weird and obsessed with sex, you won't find these machines in public. Most likely, you won't even find them in a sex shop. And if you think you found one, you're probably wrong. So Yet why? For almost 30 years, the story of these used panty dispensers has been a big part of how many foreigners see Japan. So how did this story begin? Do they exist? Or did they ever? In 1993, the first used panty vending machines were indeed put up in a part of Chiba City that was known for its porn vending machines. As you might have guessed, their presence caused a lot of controversy. Not just because they were selling underwear, but also because they probably came from girls who were underage. A decade no, later, that's Tokyo false. passed the regulations concerning the sound upbringing of Tokyo youth. It was made illegal for people under the age of 18 to sell their used underwear. Years before that, though, the law had already been changed so that the used panty machines were no longer legal. Just a few months after the first machines were put in place, the owners of the businesses were charged and the machines were taken away. Damn. This was the end of the last one of these machines in Japan. So they did once briefly exist back in the wild 90s, but they've been outlawed for a long time since. That's so days. fucking weird. What other Damn. items? Well, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Guys, imagine going to a crab vending machine and they're alive. Uh, that's weird. But if you guys enjoy the reaction content and you just want more reactions like this in the future, easy to know what to do. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.